Hello everybody and welcome back to this new video. Today we're going to be talking about the shares box, the shares Linux box from CyberSight Labs. First of all, we're going to run an nmap scan. We're going to do nmap for all ports. Uh, we're going to enumerate all services, uh, or run all scripts on it, and we specify the IP. So then we notice that port 21 is open, which is FTP. We notice that port 80 is open, which is HTTP. We then have RPC bind open. We also have NFS open, which is a network file system. And then we also have SSH open on a very high port number, which is not usual. It's usually on port 22. But this is good to note that if we get credentials, we could test them on SSH, but we'd have to specify the high port number. And then we still have a couple of high ports left. But first, let's check out on NFS, see if we can find anything there. So NFS, pretty much, uh, you can specify locations that you want to mount. So we can do show mount dash E for export. And then we specify the IP. And this will show us what locations uh, who could mount for this IP. So for example, home slash Amir, any IP can mount that. So let's mount this share. So we're going to do mount dash F uh, dash T for the type, which is going to be NFS. We're then going to specify the IP and the location that we want to mount, the remote location this is. And then we can specify the local location where we want to mount that to. That should be mounts slash shares. Then we can go to slash mount slash shares. And we can do an ls here. And we see that we are indeed in the home directory of Amir currently. Um, we notice there's a couple of things. But the first thing that pops up is .ssh. So let's... Um, Take a look at that because that might contain a private RSA key or, or stuff like that. So let's go to .ssh and do another ls here. So we see that we have authorized keys, id RSA, and a public key, but we can't read any of these because they are owned by Frank. But we can read this backup. So let's take a look at this backup. And we can see that's an RSA private key. So maybe we can log in with that. So let's copy this key locally here. So slash mount shares dot SSH uh, dot back to here. Now, in order to test this key, we have to give it the right permissions. So that's going to be chmod 700 on ID RSA back. Now you can try to log in by specifying the private key for Amir. I have two spaces here for Amir at the IP. And then don't forget, we have to specify the port, which was 27853. 27853. And we have to enter a passphrase for this private key, which we currently don't have. But since we have the private key, we can try to brute force it. So we want to do SSH to John which is going to extract the hash from this private key. Uh, so let's see where that is at SSH to John. OK, we have that right here. So if you do SSH to John on this private key, we see that we get a hash. So a SSH hash that we can crack with John. So let's uh, pipe that into a file called hash. And now we can start cracking that with John dash dash word list. And we're going to use rock you for this word list slash rock dot txt. And then we specify the hash. So that's cracking right now. And we see it's already found the password, which is hello six. So now that we have that password, we can quit that. We can go back to our SSH command and we can enter hello six as a password. And that's correct, and we get access to Amir. So now uh, we could uh, we could uh, try to get privilege escalation, maybe become a root. Uh, and one of the things we can you can try is by typing sudo l, which is going to list all the sudo permissions you have. Now we notice we have all permissions on sudo, but we don't have the no password on it. But since we already have a password, it's worth trying out if we can do sudo. Who am I? Let's see if we can run that. We have to enter a password. Maybe they reuse the password hello6. But if we enter that, we will notice that 
No, that's not the correct password. So that's not a way we can go. However, we do have, we can execute uh, Python 3 as Amy without entering the password. Now, whenever you have something in sudo l, it's always good to go to gtfo bins and look around here. So if we type Python, we see there's a, a page on Python and it says here sudo. So we can do sudo python and then with dash c say import os os system bin slash sh. So let's see if we can run this, if that will, will work. So we can do sudo, but we have to specify the user Amy. Then we also have to specify user slash bin slash python3. Let's clean this up. Dash c import os os.system and instead of an sh shell, I'm going to try to go for a bash shell. So let's run that and we notice, yes, we are. Oh, we are Amy right now. So as Amy, we could uh, we could try the same thing again. We were going to enumerate again. And while you're enumerating, you will execute sudo l. And we notice that this time we can run another command without password. But this time we can run it as root. And it's SSH that we can execute this time. So let's execute the same step again. Go back to GTFO bins and search for SSH. And we notice here, okay, there's a page on SSH. And for sudo, it says we can spawn an interactive shell through the proxy, proxy command option. So we're going to do SSH-O proxy command and then start another SH shell. So let's see if that works. So we're going to do sudo user bin SSH. And actually, to show that this wouldn't work, oh, this actually works. Okay. I was not aware of that, um, but sometimes here, uh, when these uh, commands get more complex, you might want to make sure that you execute exactly what it says right here. Now, in this case, this worked by just specifying SSH, but sometimes you will want to make sure that you have, uh, that you run, and I'll show it here, um, sudo slash user slash bin slash SSH, and then all of this. And I'm also going to go for a bash shell here. So sometimes you want to make sure that you do this. In this case, it worked. But make sure that if this doesn't work, that you specify the full path. But that's how we got root on this box. It was another pretty easy box, but it learned a good uh, amount of stuff about, uh, it taught a good amount of stuff about uh, NFS, network file system, and how to use it and how to enumerate it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed the box. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comments, and I'll see you back in another video.